Hello boys and girls, welcome to part one of the Magnuson Supercharger install or how-to videos. This behind me is a 2019 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon JL. So I'm gonna break this down to maybe four, three, four, five parts. So if you're considering installing this supercharger by yourself, it is doable. You gotta be somewhat mechanically inclined and have some, you know, basic tools. In my case, it wasn't all as in the instructions. I had to improvise, uh, modify a few parts here and there, you know, use my head. But it's all doable for any DIYer. So watch the whole thing before you start, so you kind of know how to begin. So there will be other how-to videos uh, coming up on the lift kit, the bumpers, lights, auxiliary switches, step boards, outer and inner fenders. So make sure you check out my other Jeep videos. If you're interested, there's plenty of videos on a 06 Subaru STI. And as always, like, subscribe, comment, and thanks for watching. And I hope this helps you out. Now I actually started doing the rear fenders, but then the supercharger showed up. And then I remembered I should record it. Okay, so this is where you put your ECM and send it back to them for retuning. Here look like coolant lines or hoses, spark plugs, some a bracket, a few bolts, another probably mounting brackets, harness, intake pipe, serpentine belt, some plastic reservoir, this, I don't know, gasket set. Oh yeah, big box. Stand it up. Oh, it is up. Oh man. Lower manifold, little bit louder. Oh yeah, this is it. Heaviest box? No, holy shit. Oh yeah, this is it boys, Magnuson, 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 Magunson, I don't know, and I don't care. Okay, that's a tiny inner cooler. You're so tiny. Look at this is... It's been tested three, four, four days, no, eight days ago. <laughs> I'm opening this. All right, today is the 24th. So this was 11 days ago. This is, the, this is gonna be the front mount intercooler. Is this damaged? No. Yes, it is. You got some damage. Mm-hmm. Thank Lord for these. Oh, man, 200... 245 steps. All right. All right, boys, I'm gonna go study this. That's it. I'm done with YouTube. All right. Installation of the Majunsen supercharger. Basically, take this off, this off, this, ECM, the front bumper, grill, cover. All right, let's get to it.
One second. Fuel pump relay K02. Pull this and start the engine. Okay, so that was 33 steps out of 245. Number 34 is to take the belt off. So this is the tensioner here, half inch ratchet or breaker bar. And it looks like it's gonna pull to the right. I'm gonna use the pipe. So go slow, use a lot of uh, strength, but go slow. Okay, now the alternator, 115 here, another on the left side, these are 13s. Now this alternator bracket, 16 and a 13. Okay, now throttle body, two push pins. And this plug. That just broke.
there's no clamp on this hose but it's just it's a tough hose Remove the hose first before you remove the throttle body so you have something to pry against. Now 8 mils. Oil already. Where do you think that's coming from? Okay, so I had to unpack all of this stuff. As you can see, quite a few new parts. One less box to open. So I'm just gonna leave wrapped and leave it here. Okay, I had to unpack it because this throttle body seal, take it off very carefully because you need to reuse it. Come on now, I don't wanna damage you there we go see patience and I'm gonna install it on the supercharger I'm gonna take a closer look at this thing so it's obviously belt driven it's gonna spin this way you see how these guys work so if you look through where the air is going to be coming in now you see I don't know I, mean, I hope you can see this as the uh, not turbines uh, I don't know what you call those uh, the flaps the I don't know whatever as they come down and as they disappear on the bottom there they collect air okay each one i mean obviously this spins super fast maybe they're called the fins so it's going to spin this way and the air actually comes out from both sides and enters the engine okay so here we have a coolant reservoir a new serpentine belt lower intake uh, cover this will bolt down onto the lower intake this is going to get hooked up to coolant and that's it so these two big boxes that's where it all comes with or comes in this is the evap hose okay so this line is supposed to get disconnected fully there's a, another same kind of connection just behind the passenger side cylinder head i can barely see it Everything's sharp on this thing, I swear. I mean, look at my hands. Okay. So you're just pushing that in. So pull these two. This is your transmission vent hose. Yeah, it's... It made it... It's... it. It's made its way all the way up here. Yeah, more, more, you know what, going into your engine. Just gonna leave it aside, maybe push it over. Keep it out of here. Is that, okay, perfect. See, they, they made these there for a reason. All right, this needs to get disconnected as well. Oh, it's right here. It's clipped in. Disconnect EGR valve. 
disconnect the map sensor. These brown push pins need to go. There's one just behind the uh, map sensor. This one could be tricky. It's covered a little bit. I mean, this is not going to get used, reused. There we go. We're going to remove the steel tube going into the EGR valve. Okay, save this gasket and the bolts. Okay, this is the uh, EGR pipe bracket. There's two, this one is the easier one. I don't know why do they make these so long. It's almost like wasting material, though I'm talking about the stud. Why is it so long, you know? And another one is right there, right there. Looks like I can use a ratchet. Now begin to take the upper intake off. These two are tens, the rest of them are eights. All right, using a ten with a swivel, get to the rear ones. One more. I'm gonna try and pry these out. go okay you gotta get these two push pins off and there goes the intake now we're not going to be reusing this I'm just gonna put it aside here Okay, now the throttle body bracket. Okay, now drain the coolant. The plug is on the driver's side in the front. I'm probably gonna try and find a hose I can attach to here so I don't make a mess and save the coolant. Yes, you can save the coolant. Make sure the container is clean. Something's coming out. Almost seems like it's gonna, this plug is gonna come out and I don't want it to. There we go. Just Okay. I'm going to leave it here. Let it drain and work on something else. Lost my nut. We are removing this heater core pipe along with the hose.
should have removed the lower holes first then the nuts or from the brackets but there is a way see like nothing all right there's a zip tie needs to be cut to separate the two okay i thought i was recording <sighs> So I just removed this heater core pipe. As I was saying, this short hose is going to get reused and this fitting is going to get reused. So this is what it's supposed to look like. I'm going to take this clamp off. I'm going to close the plug and move this so I don't step on it and make a huge mess or contaminate it and not be able to reuse it. So keep it in a safe place. Probably be a good idea to put something over it. All right, I'm gonna remove this fitting now. Cut the hose to remove this fitting and save the clamp and one of these Okay, this one. 